Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Well, hello, everyone. I am Katie Petrick, and I am joined by David Fiorazzo, that yes. author yes. that is. Thank you. And has a brand new hey, book. Hey, books make great Christmas gifts. They do. Books make. And, and they are easy to wrap. Yeah. They are easy to wrap. Yeah. Very nice. Assault Very nice. on the image of God. Just wanted to plug that shamelessly uh, on Amazon oh, or no. Olive Tree Ministries, Olive Tree Views. But on Worldview Matters today. Yeah, what'd you so do? I know you were going to ask me about that. I know. Yes, George Carneal, former, <gasps> former homosexual. Uh, was on my show today. We talked a lot about the LGBTQ issues and the onslaught of intelligence of Americans. Um, but they're winning. They're winning the culture war. But how can we fight back? So George Carneal, my guest, great uh, brother in Christ. Thank God he's out of that uh, movement. But he was in that for many decades out in California. Um, God saved him, and now uh, he's a brother. But anyway, go to worldviewmatters.tv. You'll get our email update every Friday. And don't forget, you got to get the book. Yes. Books you make great Christmas gifts. Book. It's getting close, though. Super close. It's too to close, go. I think, for but Christmas hey, now. Get it for next year. Get it for the new year. Get it for the new year. Yeah. Get it for the new year. Yeah. All right. Just a quick reminder that if you are a fan of our show, please consider giving to our end of the year fundraiser to support production costs so that we can come back for another year. That we can come yes. back after the new year. Or maybe you won't see us. And that would be sad for everyone. Now, any amount of donation would be greatly appreciated. But if you're able to give $99, we would love to send you our stainless steel American Patriot tumbler. And it is, it's high quality, people. It's not just, oh, I slap a sticker on it and call it a day. This is etched. Etched. Right here. Nice. And it has George Washington on the back. Yeah, the American George. Patriot. He is. The original. Now, uh, all you have to do to donate or to get this Tumblr is visit PatriotClub.us. That's PatriotClub.us, and you can make your tax-deductible donation there. All right. Well, so here we go. You go to college. You're an Ivy Leaguer, right? Ivy League. <laughs> you get into college, and you're so smart. You're Ivy doesn't so smart. mean much anymore, by the way. Well, now, well, now, I mean, you got into that college, and now all you, all of you get A's because they're like candy. You get an A. It's like what Oprah does. You get an A. You get an A. You get an A. <laughs> and of course, all of this, everyone getting A's, it goes back to years of the participation trophies and all the feelings. And it's all Oprah's, Oprah's fault because everyone got a car. Everyone, you know, you get this, you get that. What's happening over at Yale? Well, apparently an estimated 78.9% of all the grades given to undergraduates uh, fell within the A range you're going what uh, how can this be good anyway they're saying it's risky not to give a's let's watch this video and we'll come back and we'll talk about it well usually people have thought that the reason that grade inflation happens is because we want to give our students a leg up in the job market and big universities are requiring this of their professors but honestly it's because one it's a pain in the neck to not give a's and two it's really risky for professors' jobs to not give A's. Here's why. Joey, you give Joey a bad grade. So first of all, you get the incessant emails and whining from Joey. Then that doesn't work. You get the emails from Joey's parents trying to explain why Joey doesn't have a, an A besides the fact that his performance just wasn't A-level work. And then if that doesn't work, the accusations start to come out. You're racist or you're homophobic or I've gotten called anti-Semitic and they only back down when I pointed out that I'm Jewish. And, you know, there's no backup here for giving fair grades because as soon as one of these accusations happen, professors are thrown to the wolves of these diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion deans at the whiff of an accusation. So not only is it a pain in the neck, it's also risky for your job. Now we figured out why all these DEI administrators have to be hired because they're all being unleashed upon these professors who are giving out the grades, or at least attempted to give out the grades that the students earned. No! Sick them! Sick them! There goes the DEI official to go get that professor for daring to give out a B- minus to Joey, who didn't come to class half the time, fell asleep, drooled all over his midterm, but hey, he's supposed to get an A. I am a little disappointed that it's 78.97% of all the grades being an A. Shouldn't it be like 90 some percent of them getting the A since, get it, they're all getting A's. So Yeah, I just think it's, that's it not even a you quality. know, it comes down to money. Um, 
hey, we're paying money to go to this college. Give us good grades. But as you can see on this chart, it, it, when, when, when was that, that COVID thing? When, when did that happen? Was it COVID-19? And here we are in 2023. And it's still yeah. up there. But you see in 2018, 2019, there were about just under 73%, which is still a super high number yes, to is. get A's. Jeez. But it spiked then in 2020, 2021 year when 82% of Yale students were getting grades. Of, of an A. Like, they were all getting A's. Like, basically, you had to just be an yep. awful, awful student. Yeah. Like, They're... not show up ever or turn anything in to maybe get a C, <laughs> like, at that point. But you can see the GPA, the average GPA of students from between, like, when COVID hit, jumped 10 little points. So, a 3.64 to a 3.74. And it's barely coming down hmm. from that. And it's 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 ridiculous. These yep. kids are not earning these grades, but we well, can't hurt feelings. Well, yeah. Well, how many decades have we, have we been talking about this idea that we're not grading performance anymore or their students' knowledge or teaching to the test, mm-hmm. uh, things like that, and now we're giving them just higher grades because we think they, they should have them. Not oh. that they deserve them, not that they earned those high grades, but you know what? I, I think they I think they need these higher grades. I think it's it. the right thing to do. Let's get the DEI czar Man. and uh, I diversity, bet, equity, and inclusion. Yeah, do you remember back when, like, curves? Like when professors would yeah. curve a, a test Grading or something? That, I mean, that used to be, the, oh, wow. Oh, that was, like, the, like, big debate going on. Now it's like, you gave someone a B? <gasps> <laughs> like that's it. like everyone has to get that a everyone's at the top of the mountain on this one so either way it's it's just ridiculous in my book and uh yale harvard's doing it too we reported on this how harvard how yep. bad harvard has done it too so and it's not you, just harvard and yale so it's, when yeah. we talk about like buying your way through that you are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and that's to the, buy your a and that's the point is that of the what parents are you are you yeah the parents it, that follow up and say wait a minute did i see a a b i a, donate a c blah, plus blah, blah, millions no, dollars no, 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 no. Blah, we're, blah, we're, yeah we're, 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 we're boosters we're uh, donors mm, to the universe nepotism, anyway, anyway. <laughs> let's move on it turns uh, out that a ridiculous amount of millennials have been so brainwashed that they believe the holocaust was a myth Real true story. And one particular political party, guess which one, is more likely to believe it was a conspiracy. No. We're talking about that next. So everyone at Yale is getting A's and no one there or probably most of the campuses around the United States know the truth. That's well, where that's yeah. that's the that's the truth. Um, that's why when this poll came out, there's a new poll that came out. It's of no shock to me whatsoever that one in five Americans who are aged 18 to 30, okay, okay age 18 to 30, they think the Holocaust is a myth. Like it didn't happen. Wow, one like, in five. We just yeah, 20 percent. Whoa, I did the math there. Um, it's a myth, and and then. If, even if they're like, well, yeah, kind of happened. It's something. Even more people say it. Well, it's exaggerated as to what happened during the Holocaust. But but it's what? exaggerated. Yeah. It either didn't happen at all, or it's exaggerated according to them. Now, this survey is by the Economist and YouGov. It included fifteen hundred people, ranging in age from eighteen to six, or more than sixty-five years old, and they were asked a series of questions about the massacre of six million Jews, because that's the Holocaust. Yeah, okay? the historical truth yes. of this. Now, as you Holocaust. see, about 20% of them, aged 18 to 29, agreed with the statement, the Holocaust is a myth. And then even more of them believe that the death toll has been exaggerated. Now, look, let's just look, keep this graphic up here for a, little, mm. for a hot second, if you would. Interesting how you have, okay, the Holocaust is a myth. Yeah, 20% of those 18 to 29-year-olds are like, yeah, it's a myth. You get up into more millennials, yeah, about 8% of them, still way too high, saying, oh, yeah, it's a myth. Then you get into those Gen Xers in a little bit. Then, oh, 2%. You look at the 65 plus. You look at the boomers and beyond. And guess what? Zero. None of them think the Holocaust was a myth. Why, David, would that be the case? Well, I think they used to teach actual history in K through 12. And, I think be, that's a big... and be very 
close to the actual events because their parents may yes, have been a part of it heard, yeah, or they, uncles or aunts or and cousins. there were eyewitnesses and there were a lot, there was a lot of testimony there was court cases there were there was all kinds of news about the true uh, world history that included the war and the holocaust um but yeah this is really amazing to me that the left has done such a good job of removing some uh, some true history out of the textbooks in the K through 12 and academia of course they're not going to support the biblical worldview or they're not going to support Israel or the Jewish people yeah. generally and I don't want to put anybody under the, the all the same blanket but generally so th yeah it's it's uh, that anyway so you might as well just say uh, anyone under 30 most people under 30 not most but that's the that's the well, age range that well, we're dealing with on a lot of these surveys, eighteen to thirty. Mm -hmm. And know. when we when we get into now, okay, maybe it isn't mm. a myth, but hey, it's been way exaggerated, David. Like, whoa. Oh, okay. As we take a look at this, twenty three percent of that eighteen to twenty nine then are saying, well, it's been exaggerated. Everything that's happened, and again, it. it what do they mean by that? The number of deaths that happened, the tragic tragedy that happened with it. The death toll has been exaggerated. Everything's been exaggerated. Oh, it's not so bad. It wasn't that bad. As okay, you go up in the age. Wasn't six or seven million. All right. All right. Ahead. Yeah. So 23% say, yes, it's been exaggerated if they're 18 to 29. Then you move up the age bracket, 30 to 44 year olds, 9% say it's been exaggerated. You move up the 45 to 64 year olds, 4%. And then 65 plus, only 2% say it's exaggerated. Again, this goes hand in hand with the amount of education that these people have received when they received it and the closeness to the actual event. Those who kind of lived through it or had family members who lived through it and can actually understand what happened. The f like more you're removed from it, the less you know. And the education has focused less and less about historical accuracy and more and more about what's that stuff? Oh yes, the agendas of the LGBT, yep. the uh, race, everything is just race class gender now in every class gym class health class for sure health class math class reading class any class race class gender race class gender that's all they teach they don't have time to talk about that thing what holocaust what what huh. started it's with just sex so sad. sex race class gender sex because well the they put it into gender education yeah they, race class gender it's just like they before put gender was a big deal yeah it they, was the hyper they call it those are just the categories yep yeah. it's ridiculous now the results are being linked to data that show that 32% of that age group, 18 to 30, get their news from TikTok. <laughs> what? Interesting. What, really? What happens on TikTok? Oh, my goodness. Who owns TikTok? Who created TikTok? Oh, Do you remember? We're in trouble. I think know? it's China. To China? The Chinese Communist Party. Chickity CCP. China, the Chinese chicken. Yeah, they own, yeah. They own TikTok. One third of those people in and that age group get their news from that TikTok. Young people. Yep, that generation. So is there a reason we should maybe not have TikTok or you shouldn't have let your children be on TikTok? Is there any reason whatsoever? I, <laughs> I'm, wow. I guess I'm being lost. It's just entertainment though, Katie. It's just it's just good fun. Good fun. That's All good. right. Well, we have a campus chaplain who's Move on. from Wake Forest University who's not so fun. Um, <clears throat> Wake Forest University hosted a winter celebration for all. Yet they missed uh, an important word in the 275-word uh, invite, and we're going to talk about that next. Shh, don't say it. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Hey, David. Yes. Happy holidays. Are we going to start this again? We, we, we spent two weeks prepping people, getting them to acknowledge the Christmas season, Katie. Come on. Happy holidays. What holiday are you celebrating Oh, let's just be inclusive, though. We don't want to offend anybody. That is the whitewashing of Christmas and the reason we're even celebrating and what we're celebrating. Just know. Know that. You think you're being nice and kind to someone who has the, the a holiday of Festivus. 
or something every year, right? All right, I'm, all right you got me. You did that on purpose. So, Merry Christmas at Wake Forest University. There is no Merry Christmas, uh-huh. especially not coming from the campus chaplain who sent an email doing uh, all that he could to not mention Christmas. The chaplain. So, there was a 275 word email that was sent out uh, back on December 1st to students and staff from University Chaplain Tim Allman, and he only referenced the holiday season. So winter celebration. Do and degree doc. So Wake Forest Forest University, which just so you know, was uh, originally founded by Baptists, hosts a winter celebration for employees as well, just so you know. But uh, there was no mention of the word Christmas. They had that in a memo. So no Christmas there either. So here here's what happened. Oh, okay. There was a person who actually sent copies of these emails to the college fix. And that person was disappointed. That person said that the university does not recognize that the second most important day on the Christian calendar is coming up later this month, but it does seem to recognize the pagan holiday of the winter solstice. The event that they were talking about in the original 275-word email was for Love Feast. Okay. The uh, campus... What is that, a potluck? The, it sounds like it. What? The What's campus that? source, who again, remained anonymous, you know, didn't, re- didn't want any retribution there, said... Um, it's a Moravian Christian tradition held to celebrate Christmas as the Moravians were the first European settlers in the Wake Forest University region of North Carolina. Okay. Here's a positive, though, David. Don't, okay. don't okay. get your undies in a bunch too much. Uh, too late. Ooh. I'm, Do you need a I'm moment? Kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he on, needs a I moment just, to unbunch. Gotta, I got to readjust here. I'm kidding. The campus email may not have said anything, but there is a positive... <laughs> they, uh, on the website, did include the word Christmas in oh. describing the service itself, okay. which was held there that weekend, and the event okay. included many Christian traditions, All including right. lighting of an Advent can- candle, scripture readings, and traditional Christmas songs and hymns about the birth of Jesus. In other words, no jingle bells or no grandma got run over by a reindeer, no Santa Claus hey, is coming. No she was coming home Santa from Claus. our house Christmas Eve. Are you teaching your kids there's a Santa Some Claus? Some say I'm- they don't believe in Santa, but as for me and Grandpa, we believe. The winter celebration, huh? Yep. Well, uh, Cheryl Walker, who's the campus spokesperson, said their winter celebration that they have, just so you know, is a gathering for all faculty and staff celebrating the end of the semester. So it's it's not about baby Jesus. But North Carolina. We're celebrating. Is that, it's North Carolina? Yeah. 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 Do Down they have North snow Carolina. in North Carolina? North Carolinians. Is, is Let really us know. Winter? I don't think they really do. I think if anything, it's, well. Anyway. Some of us aren't getting a white Christmas either. I know. But I digress. Yeah. Because we have 21 medical workers in Kentucky who are going to have a Merry Christmas because they're getting an extra specific gift in their uh, stocking this year thanks to one lucky lottery ticket. It's a heartwarming story. Perfect way to wrap up today's show. So stay with us. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. So a supervisor at uh, Med Center Health Environment Services, that's in uh, near Bowling Green, Kentucky, they gifted uh, the employees there with Kentucky Lottery scratch-offs this Christmas. Well, good news. Um, the employees ended up with a $50,000 win. Woo-hoo. And uh, so she, Sheila Coulter Uh, The second shift supervisor at Med Center Health Environmental Services said she purchased other gifts for her employees, but they had not shipped in time. She said, our work Christmas party was early this year. I ordered some items online. They didn't come before the party. So I decided, interestingly, just, just, you know, random thing. I decided, well, you know what, let's get some scratch off lottery tickets. So at the party, she gifted her employees with the lottery tickets and, uh, um, purchased some $30 tickets to share, and now they're all making some pretty nice money. Yeah. And, and they get it for free. Let's, let's see. Here's some of the responses. It means a lot. Uh, there's several. Uh, they get to help their family. 
um, Winnie's mother is sick with stage four cancer. And so she gets to uh, help buy medicine with her money. And uh, there's some that needs rent money. And there's some that didn't have no way for Christmas money this year. So it's going to help a lot of people. <sighs> so in that instance, it pays to not have get, getting your Christmas gifts on time. Isn't that it, interesting? Because it turned into that. Isn't that interesting, though? They, they're, they're bummed up. You know, the presents didn't, they're not going to be there in time for the party. Oh, uh, well, let's give them some lottery tickets. And, but it was interesting yeah. because she, they got, like, smaller tickets, and then they kept winning, so they just kept doing more. They could have stopped at any point on this. Now, we're not trying to say, go out there yeah, yeah, and play right. a bunch of scratch-offs. That's not what we're trying to say No, here. not at all. But I'm just saying, sometimes. What are you saying? There's some divine intervention on this. <laughs> no, that it's an interesting happen. story because of some of the needs. I mean, you, you can. It's, this is not just there in Kentucky. Across the country, there are a lot of people in need. Every, just open your eyes. Every community, where you live, where we live, you know, there are people in need. And um, it just takes a little extra kindness. But um, it's nice that people are going to be able to, you know, use the money for medical um, bills and for rent and people that are really struggling. So I think it, this is there's a bigger reminder here in this story that uh, people are really in need and we just need to be more sensitive to those around us to be a blessing this Christmas, right? Because yeah. it's not just about the obligation of gift giving or the busyness of the holidays, right? So let's remember the people that we we live with and we are around. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's quite a blessing then for these 21 of them um, who originally were playing, and then there were 14 when they won that $50,000. And so when they do after taxes and all that, you know, they all got to get the government tax on there. The fact that they're each getting a $1,750, that's huge. And that's, mm. that's really uh, quite, like, heartfelt that yeah. they get to, to have a Merry Christmas for them this year. Yep. So that's good. All Excellent. right. Well, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Just kidding. She's all joking, right. Joking. If you are a fan of this show, as uh, I think you all are, if you're at this yeah, point in the show, if you've been with us this long, then welcome to what we have here at Educated. <laughs> uh, if you could, if you'd like, if you'd comment, if you'd share, subscribe, do all the things if you're watching us on social media to kind of help us out here. And of course, if you are a fan of the video platform Rumble, you may already know, but in case you didn't, we have our channel over there. So go to rumble.com slash Freedom Project and, and follow us there too. Now for David and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and stay educated. Merry Christmas.